Hello guys, it's me Simo Orohara and in this video I will talk about Sinjimaru's Bankai and how Yuri might turn the table on her, enabling the return of the Elite Guards. Because there are two events that clearly show Sinjimaru will be defeated after this battle. The first event happened in the manga. The manga version of the battle had many changes. In the manga, the fight involved Sinjimaru creating a fake royal palace and placing it inside the Tree of Life formed by Hikifuni. Then Nimaya intervened and defeated all the royal guards and new Abach then revived the elite guards ending the battle with the defeat of the zero squad members we didn't see any intervention from Hartfeld or Yoru in the manga and new Abach then moved on to fight Ichib which ended in Ichib's defeat and after that we saw a scene where all the members of zero squad appeared dead and this scene will likely be shown in the third part but in a different way and this different approach was partly revealed at the end of the second core when we saw Nimaya, Hikofuni and Kirin killed themselves to enable Sinjimaru to unleash her bank and this means we have already lost three characters as they are dead likely expecting Sinjimaru to win and revive them which won't happen they might be revived by Ichibi but not Sinjimaru and to discuss guys how Yuri will return to the battle, we will focus on the scenes shown in the trailer featuring both Sinjimaru and Yuri and Kubo's way of handling many battles in this arc. Because when you rewatch the battles from the final arc, you will notice a recurring pattern, and this pattern may make some fans concerned about Sinjimaru's fate and how she will be defeated. Because some forget that the battle isn't over, the fight between Sinjimaru and the elite guards is still ongoing, and therefore judging Sinjimaru's Bankai and its full power shouldn't be based on half the battle. We do not deny her strength, but we need to see the entire fight for an objective evaluation evaluation, especially considering Kubo's writing style for recent battles. For example, looking back at the battle between Yamoto and Yuhabach, you will see that each chapter or progress in the fight makes Yamamoto appear stronger, showcasing powerful techniques like the western, eastern, southern, uh, zombie related and northern attacks of Zankanotachi. And this can be seen as Yamamoto's peak moment. Afterward, there is a sudden vertical drop, and he is quickly and unexpectedly defeated defeated by the real Yuabach, who steals his Bankai and kills him in one chapter. The same thing happened with the battle between Ichibi and Yuabach. Kubo depicted Ichibi with great power, both in terms of drawing and techniques, showing off his Zanpakuto abilities, Kido, the blackness ability, and his Bankai, and he too reaches a peak and then experiences a vertical drop when Yu Habach uses the Almighty and defeats him in one chapter. And the same pattern applies to Masculine and Rinji. Masculine showcases his full strength against Rinji, even using his wall standing. But once Rinji releases the Bankai, the fight ends quickly with Masculine's defeat. And there are many other examples, but time doesn't permit me mentioning them all. So I'm mentioning these battles to remind you guys that we might see a similar scenario with Sinjima. If you placing Jimaro in the same situation as Imamoto or Ichibi, you will see that the same pattern at least in the first half of their battles. Sinjimaru leads the Bankai causing an earthquake in the real world and her Bankai's power and its importance are emphasized. And as we have seen in some interviews of Daguchi and Kobo about Sinjimaru's Bankai, the Bankai's ability is not an illusion but real. In Kobo's illustration of the Bankai showing a large rate the Chanmanu fabric extending along the path and smaller gates appear besides the large gate from which more fabrics grow infinitely and this is the basic ability of Sinjimaru's Bankai if her Shikai generates infinite threats so the Bankai do the same thing but with the fabric infinite fabric used to attack, bend or suffocate the enemy or sew the enemy inside the fabric as we can see in these illustrations of Kobo so at the start she encases the enemy in an oval space placing each one in a specific spot, then moves beside them and applies a specific ability. Many thought that Sinjimaru's Bankai controlled fate, but the information released clarified that her abilities have no connection to fate. And considering Kubo's work, we can hypothesize why Yuri appears fighting Sinjimaru in the trailer. In all the trailers we have seen, Yuri is the only one shown fighting Sinjimaru. He appears using his bow and arrow, while Sinjimaru look at him uh, seemingly not surprised by his return. Yuru is also still with the range of her Bankai, and in other scenes, she tries to hit him with the fabric uh, she initially sealed him with. So it can be said that Yuru's ability, the antithesis, might allow him to break the seal. 
the antithesis is a power you have upset, surpasses his own, is likely the reason Yuri survived the Auswell when all the impure Quincy died, leaving him the only survivor. Even though I think this ability wasn't fully developed when he was young, and it was given all the abilities we saw when Yuhabach granted him the script A. But it is believed that the antithesis will be what enables Yuri to nullify Sinjinor's Bankai by reversing the damage, choosing himself as a point A and Sinjimaru as a point B, and by that reversing the effects and uh, escaping the fabric, and the damage that should affect Sinjimaru won't, as she knows her Bankai's ability and how to counter them. Thus, since Yuryu cannot be sealed, the battle will continue differently, as hinted in the trailer. And some fans uh, suggested something that I really liked, that if Sinjimaru's Bankai controlled fate or used ability to defeat the elite guards, she might have used a power similar to the Auswell to defeat Yuryu. But since Yuryu is immune to Auswell, this ability, the ability that she used, wouldn't affect him. And given this, the fight against Sinjimaru might involve Yuryu using the antithesis against her or losing his vault standing, leading to a scenario maybe similar to Mayuri's fight, where Yuryu's vault standing ends the battle with Sinjimaru, killing her along with the other members. That's why I'm telling you guys that we need to wait to see how the fight will end, or I should say, how Kobo will portray Sinjimaru's defeat. As I mentioned, Go often makes you think the fight is going one side, and then suddenly something happens that shifts the balance to the other side. It's rare to see an evenly matched fight in this arc. In most battles, one side starts off dominating, then something unexpected occurs, causing them to lose their advantage and be defeated by some kind of plot twist. And we have seen this with Yamamoto and Ichibi, and also with the Zero Squad members and the Elite Guards in the manga. At the start, Nimaya killed all of them. But then you have revived them and they killed the members of Zero Squad. That's why I'm really curious to see how Kobo will end the fight between Sinjimaru and Yuryu. Additionally, I'm really excited to see how he will write the new fights that will occur in the third part. Will he follow the same pattern I have mentioned and talked about, or he will surprise us with something different? So, as I said, I'm really excited to this part especially the new fights that we will see. So what about you guys? What do you think about the fight of Sinjimaru and Yuryu? Do you have other theories that I didn't mention? Write them in the comments and see you guys in my next video.